they might not have the best record, but of their four losses, three were by two goals or less. Two of those losses came by just one goal. So they've been giving it their all, and you feel like something has to give tonight. You feel like this might be the breakthrough. Now that the stage is set, we're going to keep it a little quiet for a couple minutes until the player introductions are done. I know everyone's eagerly looking at their watches, but it is not quite time for the opening kickoff just yet. It shouldn't be long, though. And right behind me, the Arizona Impact players are coming out. We are just moments away from the player introductions. And it is just about 7 o'clock. I know a lot of people were waiting for that 7 o'clock time. It is now 7 o'clock. The Arizona Impact players are coming out. They're about to enter the field. They are walking just behind me right now, along with some adorable kids that are here for tonight's game. We got a pretty good crowd. For those of you that are just joining us because it is 7 o'clock, this matchup is a big one between the Arizona Impact and the Las Vegas Knights. The Las Vegas Knights undefeated 2-0 on the season. These teams actually played last weekend with the Las Vegas Knights eking out a 9-8 victory in Nevada. The Impact nearly notched their first win of the season in that game. However, goals by the Knights in the last three minutes, two of them, were enough to turn the tide and give the Knights a one goal win. Now the Arizona Impact look for some revenge, looking to make a splash, get in the win column for the first time this season, and you can feel that we're about to go. So we're going to cut the sound off, we're going to give you the on the field player introductions, and we'll be back in a few. Enjoy this game.
And the national anthem is finished. The player introductions are finished. And we are back with sound moments away from the opening kick here between the Las Vegas Knights and the Arizona Impact. In case anyone missed who these teams are and what they're about, the Las Vegas Knights enter this game at 2-0. Two one-goal wins. And the Arizona Impact are still looking for their first win. However, it is just their second home match of the season. Their first in almost a month. And these teams played last week in Las Vegas with the impact being less than three minutes away from a huge win. The Knights scored two goals in the last three minutes, and now the impact are looking for revenge. The Arizona impact have just broke their team huddle. 
and we are moments away. The refs are out on the field. Players are out on the field. Should be a good game here between two evenly matched Western Conference foes. The noise you may be hearing behind me is a bunch of kids that play indoor soccer at this Arizona sports complex. They were just on the field for the national anthem for the player introductions. But the players for both teams are now out in their uniforms. Las Vegas will be playing in the gray shirts and black shorts. The Arizona Impact will be playing in orange kits and black shorts. And that's how we're going to be doing it tonight from the Arizona Sports Complex. In case anyone has never watched one of these MASL2 matches before, there are four 15-minute periods. There is a 15-minute halftime break after the second period, and if the teams are tied at the end of 60 minutes, we go to a sudden death golden goal overtime. First team to score wins. got Jackson Collins inches away from my face right now we are moments away from the action and there's the opening whistle we are live from the Arizona Sports Complex with the Las Vegas Knights getting things started and that's Victor Andrades passing the ball up and the ball is cleared up the line by it appears to be Eric Tate, the goalkeeper for the impact tonight. That's a difference from some matches earlier in this season. He passes it up the left wing. And that was Matt Merrick getting things started, passing it back to Eric Tate, taking their time in the back half. And really, Tate is playing the role of a sweeper keeper here. He's over the midfield stripe looking for something. He finds Amando Lara with a wall ball that is collected. And now the Knights can take some time, get set again, and now their attack is going to be started. As they play it back to the keeper. And they try to play a wall ball, but it's easily collected. Easily collected by Eric Tate, who now gets the attack started to Matt Merrick as both teams make some substitutions. Tate brings it up the left wing again, and now it is Halel Cortez who passes it back to Tate. Neither team creating any shots on goal in the first 97 seconds. We are scoreless early on, and that's an interesting wall ball played up the wing. Perhaps a chance if they can get someone turned around in time. It's an opportunity, but it is blocked. An opportunity for Eric Hernandez, and then a shot flashed just left of the post. But a good opportunity there for Phil Jackson, not the NBA coach, but an Arizona Impact player. And here they come again with a great chance, just missed. Second try, just missed. The first chance from Sue Hale Hermandi, and then Omar Ledesma, who scored three goals last week, both shots less than two feet wide of the right post and we remain scoreless early on. You can definitely tell that the Arizona Impact are coming out with a lot more energy tonight than they did in their first home match. As a long ball is played, and a very cool, calm, collected header by Hillel Cortez. Cortez plays it back to Tate, and now Tate has some time on the ball. Just easily slides it to Lara. And the Impact have numbers up forward, Unfortunately, Omar Ledesma cannot hang on to the ball, and here come the Knights, although that's a badly passed ball. And Laura is able to regain possession for the home side. The Knights have not been on the ball too much in the early stages. As the impact played up the wall. Some real scrappy play and an interesting toe poke there. Keeper had to be aware. That was Ledesma on that toe poke. But Andrades was there to catch it. And now the Knights do have the ball. Although it's whiffed on. And Georgia Soro had to play it back to Andrades, their keeper. 
almost four minutes into this match. It's 0-0 here at the Arizona Sports Complex. Ball played up the left wing, and they have to bring it back. That's some really good pressure. The pressure was placed on the opposing team by Josh Albers, and the ball was knocked out of bounds. This will set up the Arizona impact with a really good free kick opportunity. It looks like Craig Tyrell is going to take this kick, and now they're switching. It's actually going to be Matt Markham. Markham lines up at the top of the arc. And he fakes it, and it's a goal! Excellent set play. You know they practiced that one. The ball was slid across by Matt Markham. And Phil Jackson gets the goal, the first goal of the game, and the Arizona Impact have come out with a 1-0 advantage with exactly 11-11 remaining in the first period. Will the Knights respond? They get things started on the right side. And there's going to be Jackson Collins playing it up the, up the uh, wing for Jared Chopin. A pretty intense battle on that right wall. Lots of players in that corner still battling for it. My apologies, it's a little difficult to see in that corner as we are situated really close to the impact bench. The impact do get the ball, and it is going to be Tate who has some time on the ball. And once again, he dribbles the ball into the opposing half. He's looking for someone, and he ends up passing it to a familiar face, Cortez. Cortez up the right wing. And Cortez looks like he's running to the left side. They're going to try to switch things. And interesting opportunity. An excellent save right there by Victor Andrades. Eric Hernandez did a great job setting that play up. It was him on the ball for quite a long time there. And that's a bad giveaway as the team switch. And a shot goes inches wide for the Las Vegas Knights. It was Victor on. Excuse me, not Victor Andrades, but Luis Ponce, who very nearly knotted this game up at one. It was a weird moment. Tate was out of his box. The Impact were making substitutions. And wow, you cannot get much closer without putting something on the board. Now the Impact, intriguing play here. Could this be two? Oh, man. Another chance. That was Hermandi with the keeper out. And he just could not put it on frame. Getting things started in that attack was Noel Castillo for the impact. But nothing comes of it. And the Las Vegas Knights have a chance now to calm things down for a second. It's been a rough start for them. Andrades plays the ball long. Actually a pretty nice wall ball. It finds the desired target. But good defense there by the impact. Gets them back in possession. It was Josh Albers who made the nice toe poke to get things to his defensive teammate. And now it's going to be Merrick up the left wing getting things started out of the back. Going to be a nice long ball back for Tate, the keeper. And he will play it to Merrick. Very cleverly played wall ball there. And the impact still have it. And it's back to Merrick. And he tries to find Hermandi, but... The ball is intercepted by the Las Vegas Knights. And some decent skill on the ball there by their keeper, but he could not find a target for that pass. And now a chance for an odd man rush here. Could be a shot. Oh, it was just a little bit high. John Sobey up the right wing found Matt Markham on the left wing unmarked unmarked and within 10 yards but he blasts it over the bar and now here comes Las Vegas with it down 1-0 taking their time both teams making substitutions and once again the ball is played back to Andrades Las Vegas has had trouble getting a lot of possession in the impact attacking third right as I say that a pretty physical battle on the impact half leads to a shot an interesting shot right there from Carlos Lara 
goes out of bounds. And now the Knights are going to have a very short range set piece. It's passed, shot, and it's cleared off the line. Cleared off the line. A very good chance for the Knights. But it was cleared off the line by Hillel Cortez. And now the impact will get the ball, maintaining their 1-0 lead. Now Eric Hernandez moving up the left wing, being closely guarded. He swings the ball. And it's an interesting wall ball. No one in the center. And the Knights are able to clear things momentarily. Still very intense pressure. Leads to a giveaway. And now this is Hernandez with a great ball. Oh, it was just missed. Great one-two play there, but Ishmael Castillo could not find the mark, and he had a chance. Now the ball is pushed up to the midfield stripe where Cortez makes a nice defensive play, and the impact have it again. Tate, with lots of time, plays a long ball, plays a wall ball. It's bouncing around, but it is collected by the Knights. We are more than halfway through the opening period here. And a bad giveaway. And the ball just does not fall for the impact. That's Tyrell battling in the corner. But the ball just didn't fall right to him. And now Armandi has to play it all the way back to Tate. The impact make a substitution. And now it is Merrick trying to get things started for the home side. Another ball played off the wall. Quite a few of those in the early going. But this one doesn't work out for the home side. Now the Knights try to get things going. But it's a good ball here. And maybe an opportunity as the ball is played to Ledesma. Ledesma shoots, but it is blocked by the Knights. And they'll have to get things started again as Ledesma comes off with Josh Albers replacing him. Nice ball, and Albers has his shot blocked for Andrade's to collect. We are down to 540 in the opening period. It is still 1-0 for the home side. This is Tyrell. He heads it back to Castillo. And it's just really composed play for the home team thus far. The impact have controlled the play. They've gotten their opportunities. They put one of them in the net. Arguably could have more than one. And really... Other than that one weird odd man chance for the Knights, there hasn't been too much offense to speak of for the visitors, a team that came in undefeated. And that's a little clever back heel played by the Las Vegas Knights. Jackson Collins played that back heel, and now they're driving it up the wing. And a whistle is blown. It will be Arizona Impact retaining possession. Yeah, the defense has been very stout thus far for the Arizona Impact. The Impact have taken their time on the ball. This is Cortez playing it back to Tate. Not too much going on. There's a ball played forward for Phil Jackson, but it was intercepted. And then Cortez intercepts another ball. You have to say, thus far, Cortez has been the man of the match, definitely among the defenders, and potentially among all players thus far. He's been extremely active, making great plays, getting interceptions. There's a bad ball. And what will happen here? The ball just came off all wrong, a little bit scuffed. Here come the Knights on a counterattack. Ball played fiercely off the wall by... Luis Suarez, not that Luis Suarez. And Tate is able to clear it, but not quite to halfway. Now the Knights come back. And they're looking, looking for Suarez instead. They could not get a pass through. That was Eduardo Arenado on the ball. But the ball was knocked out of bounds, and the Knights will have a free kick opportunity. And they play it back to Chopin who pushes it to the left wing. This is Suarez now. Suarez being guarded by Phil Jackson. 
Loose ball, and it is a great save. The first big save of the game for Tate. So the score remains 1-0. They're trying to play it into the middle, but the Impact are able to clear the ball, where Chopin does very well to maintain possession. That's a nice little pass. Too much time for Suarez. And yet, he cannot beat the keeper. That is another save for Tate. And the impact still lead 1-0 as we get into the last three minutes of this first period. There's a wall ball played up the left side. Battle for possession goes to Matt Merrick. He's got time. He's going to send it all the way back. And then here's Tate again. It must be tempting to want to shoot that ball, but you know you can't do that. Matt gets a shot blocked, and this will be a free kick opportunity now for the Arizona Impact. This free kick won't be taken from the arc. It will be taken from that, I would call it about 15 to 20 yards. I don't know the exact amount. It'll be taken from that line. There's a shot just a couple inches over the bar. He had the keeper beat. It was a very good design, very similar to the design that got the impact on the board in this game. But that shot about three inches over the post, and it remains 1-0. And now a shot is kick saved. A great run by Noel Castillo. And a pretty good job getting him the ball by Ishmael Castillo. The shot was cleverly kick saved though, and since it goes off the net, it'll be another free kick opportunity for Arizona Impact. And it's going to be Matt Merrick stepping up. Will he shoot it this time? He will, and just the tips of his hand were applied by Andrades to keep it 1-0. It was a clever free kick there with some bend to the keeper's right, but it did not quite beat him. And now the ball bounces around. Ledesma tries to regain possession. The refs are letting him play, and he does, in fact, get it. And now the whistle is blown after Suhail Hirmande was battling for the ball. And it is, it is going to be impact ball. Clock briefly stopped with 1.43 in the opening period. Ball played to Cortez. Cortez is going to try it up the left side. There's a battle, and it is won but it appears there is a whistle, and now Las Vegas will get the ball. Las Vegas has got to be looking for answers. One, how to keep the Arizona Impact out of their attacking third, and two, how to create much of an attacking threat. On the flip side, they have to feel pretty good because despite being solidly outplayed, it is only 1-0. And Chopin, bad giveaway. And is that a foul? They say no, because the keeper did get the ball first. Now a close range effort is blocked aside. And by the way, I was calling the Knights goalkeeper Andrades. It was very difficult to see the actual number. Andrades with a similar number, but no, that was Hector Casillas with the save. Hector Casillas in goal for the Knights. It's very difficult to see the keeper's numbers. And meanwhile, the Knights having quite a difficult time just getting the ball out of their own half. The impact get it. Shot is blocked. Another loose ball is really, really nicely tipped by Albers. And they're going to play it, trying to get it off the wall. But Cortez just plays it a little bit too high into the net. And so Casillas throws it up the side and it's going to be knocked out. It's going to be Las Vegas night ball with 21 seconds and counting in the opening period. This is Miles McRae passing it back to Chopin. Chopin's been one of their most active players thus far. And now still 10 seconds left and it's a three on three rush. This is going to be Tyrell trying to play it far post and it's just inches wide of the mark. Excellent opportunity there. And as the buzzer sounds, it is 1-0. But my, oh my, the Impact have to be feeling very unlucky to be up by only one goal. That was Josh Albers 
on the far post after a great pass from Tyrell, and he just couldn't get it on the mark. It was a nice run, though. And you got to say, Coach Cudmore has to be very pleased with the way that first period went. His team dominated from start to finish. Yeah, maybe you don't have more goals on the scoreboard to reflect that domination. But it still is a good start. You're still in front. They had two excellent set pieces, one of them actually getting the goal that put him ahead. And if you're Las Vegas, if you're Peter Sharkey, the Las Vegas Knights head coach, you got to be thinking, how are we going to sustain more pressure? How are we going to generate more of an attack, more of an attacking presence in that impact attacking third? Those are things to look out for as we move to the second period. After one, Arizona Impact one, Las Vegas Knights zero. We are now just seconds away from the start of the second period. The score, Arizona Impact 1, Las Vegas Knights 0. And the goal came from Phil Jackson. It was off a set piece. It was Matt Markham sliding the ball to him. And Jackson booming it past an unsuspecting Hector Casillas. Thank you, Myra Casillas, for correcting us. It was very difficult to see the number as they never walked in front of our booth at the midfield stripe. And it now looks like the head referee is walking out to the center dot. And the Arizona Impact are going to get things started in the second period, trying to build on a 1-0 advantage. And we're off. The first pass goes back to Merrick. And he passes it back to Tate. You have to like Tate's ability to control the ball as a dribbler and distributor. Here he tries a wall ball, does Merrick, but the ball is collected by Casillas. And he slings it forward. Mohamed Kua tried to get it. Instead, an excellent wall ball and a chance for a rush here for the impact. Another nice pass played forward as Phil Jackson tries to get there, but he is surrounded by Las Vegas Knights and they clear it. And Osoro plays it up the wing where two defenders fish the ball away from Luis Suarez. Yes, his name is Luis Suarez. And no, the Uruguayan in Barcelona striker is not on the pitch tonight. Here come the impact now. Playing the ball back for Tate. You have to admit, he's had all sorts of time way outside of the defensive third has Tate. As one commenter says, new keeper is amazing for the impact. He hasn't been tested by too many intense shots, but so far it's looking pretty good for the home side. The impact doing a great job to retain possession and a long shot misses Noel Castillo with the long shot and then a rebound with Casillas on the ground 
It went over the net, and the Las Vegas Knights will have time to reset. Couple substitutions, and the coaches are making sure that Hermande knows exactly where he needs to go for the impact. Now the Knights with the ball. This is Casillas getting a little bit further forward than he usually has, trying to play a wall ball, and it is flicked away by Noel Castillo. Now another header by Ledesma, and a chance here. That was a chance for Carlos Lara, but it was blocked. And then the ball goes off the net, and it appears Arizona Impact will have possession. The ref actually directing him to come further forward. You won't see that one every day. Usually it's the opposite. So Castillo passes to Armandi, Armandi to Tate. And Tate's just looking cool out there. Trying to play it up the wall. A really good run for Armandi, but it does not appear the impact have brought their shooting boots tonight. I can count at least three or four chances pretty decent chances that have gone well over the net. Not a lot to cheer about for folks like Carlos Casillas so far. People supporting the Las Vegas Knights. And that was a dangerous back pass to Casillas. As an on-rushing, Sobi almost got there first. The impact win another free kick. And it appears it was not Josh Albers, but Sobi who won the free kick. And now he's going to take it. Passes. And an interesting chance. That was a nice little one-two play there. But the Knights are able to clear. The shot was not quite on target. Now they move it up with Laura. And they'll pass it back to Tate. Good wall ball is actually won by the impact. Trying to get it to Tyrell, and they do. But Tyrell didn't have anyone there. So now Cortez plays it up the left side, where Laura maintains possession. And the impact actually won a couple of those 50-50 balls. They could not test Casillas, though. Now a ball played up the left side and pretty active goalkeeping there with a whistle blown and it appears it'll be a free kick for the Knights. Foul called on Josh Albers there. He's pleading to the ref, but the refs are having none of it. And they're playing a wall ball. Actually caught a couple defenders flat-footed, but no one at the end of that. Now Asoro. And another foul called against Josh Albers. He gets a blue card. And it did look to me like he did extend his arms. I don't know if that's worthy of a blue card, but it was a foul. It definitely was a foul. And that's going to give Las Vegas a man advantage for two minutes. Things have stopped for a second as Tate confers with Matt Markham right in front of our cameras. And here come the impact. Down a man, but they still have the ball. It is played up the wing by Matt Markham. And the ball played in the middle. And a clever rolling shot off the inside of the post. Can you get closer without scoring? I don't know. And then a shot blasted by Markham. But Hector Casillas up for the task and he parries it aside. Now the impact come back with it. And it's pretty incredible that they're doing this down a man Oh, it was played into the attacking third where somehow the Knights did just enough to get a toe in there when Tyrell was about to put it in. 
And if you're an Impact fan, you have to be wondering, will the fact that they are only up one goal right now come back to bite them? This is a good free kick, though. And on cue, Matt Markham, he doesn't slide it to his right this time. He blasts it into the top right corner, and now it is 2-0 to the Impact. Sometimes it's a very simple game, and on a play like that, all you gotta do is step right up and blast it. No keeper's gonna beat it, is gonna be able to stop that kind of a shot. 2-0 now. And meanwhile, here is Las Vegas. Actually, a pretty nice pass there for Miles McCray, but better defense from the impact. And that was, uh, not Phil Jackson, Eric Hernandez, who plays it to Tyrell. Back to Merrick, lots of time here. And now Tate, looking for someone, plays it up the right wing. And loose ball. That was Ledesma playing it to his left. And now Armandi, back to Ledesma and back to Merrick. And Merrick has acres of space here. He opts to play it up the right wing. And then it goes back to him, trying to play a wall ball where it is deflected, but not quite on target. Here come the Knights, playing a long ball up the wing. Wow! That was a very opportunistic strike by Luis Suarez, and it might have gotten into the top corner if not for the attentive left palm of Eric Tate. So the Knights will get the ball, and they're going to have a nice short-range opportunity where it comes back for Lara and is blocked. And now Tyrell fighting for it. He's gonna, is he gonna get that ball? He is gonna get that ball. A whistle against the Knights and the impact have it. And now up the left wing go the impact where a ball is headed clear and it was headed clear by Victor Andrades and he fights for it takes a shot that is brilliantly saved by Eric Tate now two defenders good organization here they play it up the wall and an intense fight no foul called there It was Eduardo Arenado on the defensive play, but it falls for Armandi, and now he plays it up the wall where Chopin wins a physical battle for the ball. And now here come the Knights on a three on three. The impact tried to sub. And we have a whistle here. It looks like the Knights are gonna get a free kick. I'm not sure for what reason. And here come the Knights. And they call for a timeout. It'll give us a chance to go over some fan comments. We have one, how demoralizing is it to be scored on while you're up a man? Don't ask me, ask the Knights. A team that was hanging in there tough, only down by a goal until a brilliant free kick was blasted in the top right corner. If you're looking for men of the match in this one, there are a few candidates for the impact thus far. Eric Tate has made some big time saves to keep the Knights off the scoreboard. Hillel Cortez has made some very nice defensive plays. He's been one of the most active guys on the pitch for either team. And then you gotta look at Matt Markham. Both plays come off set pieces, both goals come off set pieces. The first one, he passes the ball. A nice unselfish pass. And the second one, he just drills it. Those are the three people to keep your eyes on if you're looking for a potential player of the match. My apologies for not keeping you guys updated on the time left in the second period. We have eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the second period with the home team leading 2-0.
And we are back from the timeout with Las Vegas getting a juicy free kick opportunity. It looks like Miles McRae is going to step up and take this one. And the question here for the defense, will he pass or shoot? It's a pass. And then an absolute whiff there. A ridiculous whiff by Collins. And now we go the other way. And Markham got a little too cute there. He had a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He was a step ahead of the defender, and he didn't try to power it. Speaking of power, there's a nice left-footed shot. However, Casillas scoops it up. And there is a nice flick. It goes to Cortez, back to Tate, back to Cortez. And here's Cortez and Tate again, playing one-two. Good wall ball. And a nice near range shot is blocked. That was Lara on the attempt. And now Castillo who plays it back. To Tate, who is definitely a field general in net. Sometimes you have the more quiet keeper, sometimes you have the field generals. He is definitely a field general. And as a fellow field general, when I play my six on six games, I got to appreciate that. Here he is playing it up. But a good interception there by McCray. And a physical confrontation as Cortez once again makes his impact felt, pun intended. It looks like Arizona is going to get this ball. And Markham drills it into Casillas' gloves. And there's a battle, but Vegas is at least able to clear it a little bit until Sobi gets a nice interception from behind. Now Hermandi with the ball. Hermandi plays it to Tate, and Tate, will he slide it to Merrick? No. He plays it up the board, looking for someone as the ball bounces in front of the impact bench. It's played off the wall. Could not be grabbed by Casillas. And because of that error, Phil Jackson scores his second of the night. It was a ball rolling against the wall. And it was a real easy chance for Casillas to just scoop it up. It pops out of his hands. The impact keep it alive. And Phil Jackson gets the ball passed over to him and drills a left-footed shot into the goal, making it 3-0 now for the impact. Phil Jackson. And now if you're Las Vegas, they have not been in a hole like this all season. You have to wonder how they'll respond. As a dangerous ball is played up the boards, it actually went through Laura's legs, but into the restless, always aware hands of Tate. To be fair, we should not count the Knights out. The impact were actually up six to four late in the third quarter in last week's matchup with Las Vegas and they were still able to come back. So you know that the Knights have goals in them. The question is, are they going to be able to do it tonight or will the impact build on this impressive start? Well, right now they have a chance as Ledesma has acres of space only for Casillas to acrobatically pat it to the side. One of the commenters, Jonathan Atencio, has a very good point. Patient football from the impact. Keep on working and holding the ball. Seems like they're listening. I don't think I've seen them play this patient, this calm in possession for such an extended stretch this season. And you can see on the scoreboard, it's paying dividends. Here's Ledesma. And meanwhile, Hernandez wants the ball swung. He gets it a couple seconds too late, though, for his liking. He tries though, but the shot was not near the target. Merrick doing well to regain possession though for the impact. And he actually wins a free kick. How about that? He was being guarded by Mohamed Kua for the Knights. But Kua got his foot up there and the refs blow the whistle with just over five minutes and a half. There's a wall ball played to the right side, but Lara couldn't keep it on target. And here come the Knights on an odd man rush. 
Andrade's had it. And now a chance for a goal, and it is put in. Acres of space there. And a fine goal for the visitors. Our sheet says, our sheet says it was a Soro, but I know that that's not the man who put it in. Brilliant shot, acres of space. The visitors are indeed on the board, and the score is now Arizona Impact 3, Las Vegas Knights 1. <laughs> We're still waiting on the goal scorer for that one with 440 left in the first half. Meanwhile, here come the impact and it is over the net. If you're wondering why we're waiting, we just didn't get the number for that particular player. In the meantime, great opportunity for the impact and it's passed. And that's another goal for Markham. Now it's three of four goals scored off of set pieces by the impact. Las Vegas is having all sorts of trouble on set pieces. And that was a cool finish by Markham, his second goal of the game. And it was Josh Albers sliding the ball over to him to set up that beautiful, simple finish. With 4.36 in the first half, it is 4-1. We're starting to see this game open up a little bit. And that's a physical confrontation. They do blow a whistle on Ishmael Castillo. And Jackson Collins able to win a free kick despite being sandwiched by two Castillos. Collins passes it back to the keeper, Casillas. Casillas patiently looking for someone to drop it off to. He passes it to Chopin. And here's Casillas drilling it forward, trying to get the ball to someone off the wall, but it is excellently cleared. It does roll right to Casillas. And he will try the same thing again, up the left side, off the wall. This time it finds the Las Vegas player. That was McCray, but they could not keep the ball in the zone. And now the impact will walk the ball up the pitch with Armandi. Now Cortez with it. And Cortez has time, so he's going to slide it over to Tate. And Tate has lots of time. He plays it for Castillo, but it does not appear they will be able to keep possession. Now it's a pretty intense battle there. Ball drilled off the wall by Casillas, but then a shot has to be kick saved by Casillas. And it was a really nice chance there for Phil Jackson to put another one on the board. Just over three minutes until halftime. And instead of taking the free kick, Markham takes a timeout. I can't say I've seen that one before. But both teams are going to have a time to talk this one over. So far, so good for the home side. And just so you guys know, it was George Osoro, George Osoro with the goal for the Las Vegas Knights. I'd like to take this moment to give a shout out to Select Physical Therapy, the, phys the official physical therapy provider for the Arizona Impact. They are here to fulfill your physical therapy needs. Whether it's physical therapy, hand therapy, sports medicine, or work health needs, Select Physical Therapy is there for you. If Arizona Impact trusts them, so should you go to Select Physical Therapy or selectphysicaltherapy.com for more information. And smell you good. 
someone just pulled over and was scared. You know? so I think one of the kids probably just made this. The impact might be winning 4-1, but you wouldn't know it by the way that their bench is looking. Fiery as ever with Coach uh, Coach Cudmore and TJ Fisk barking out attention instructions at their players. <laughs> Excuse me. And now we are back at it with a free kick opportunity for Matt Markham, who has already been an absolute thorn in Vegas' side on these set pieces. Wow! He just drilled that one, but it was blocked. And he has to back pass it to Tate. And Tate, under pressure, drills the ball into the netting. This is going to be an opportunity now for Las Vegas to cut into that lead. Looks like it is going to be Miles McRae here with the opportunity. And they're actually going to get it from the top of the arc. This is a real chance for Vegas to cut into the lead. They pass it. Ooh, and it might have been there for the taking. If only Gerard Chopin could get a foot on it. It appeared he was there unmarked, but he absolutely whiffed on the ball. Now the impact have it, and they're trying to swing it for Tyrell. Pretty good job to do that full field swing pass on the ground. And so now the ball goes all the way back to Tate and Merrick. Merrick looking long. He was looking for Sobi. Didn't find him for long. But now Merrick has time. Very nice defensive play there by Armando Lara. And he gets the ball on the right wing. And he's going to try a long shot. Keeps Casillas honest. But not too much difficulty there. He was able to grab that one pretty easily. And now Lara with a really tough low shot. Threw a few bodies, but it looked like it was blocked away before it made it all the way to Tate. Now a pretty nice play up the wall by Markham. And he draws a whistle on Las Vegas. He was able to evade a couple defenders as Las Vegas was making substitutions. And with two minutes in the first half, it has been almost all Arizona impact thus far. Tate gets the ball, and he's got lots of space to work. He's going to send another long ball up, and Casillas gets up there to snag it. Another interesting thing, if you look at the shots this game, the first quarter was 4-4. Four to four. The second period, 11-3 to three advantage for the impact, and now we see a 12th one go just wide. It's really been an ambush for the impact in this second period, and Las Vegas has struggled to deal with it. Incredibly, they're losing by three goals, and that might be a little generous with the way they've played thus far. It's been a complete effort. As Tate gets down to his right and stops a very clever shot. You have to say Tate's in the running for man of the match thus far. He's made some brilliant saves. Two on one battle is won by Hernandez, but he rushed that shot a little bit. Nowhere near the target. But he gets the ball and then gets pushed down and they don't call it. That's incredible. How is that not a foul? I mean, you talk about an 11 v 11 soccer game, you're thinking that's a penalty kick. But no whistle called and we play on. Inside the final 60 seconds, there's a 1v1 chance, but Chopin gets his toe in there, and the Vegas Knights have it. Down to 15 seconds in the half, and it's a pretty big battle here, but now a chance. Will Luis Ponce bring one back? No. Rebound is blocked aside. It does go off the net, but the Knights have just 1.9 seconds remaining. This is enough time to get a shot off. So it'll be interesting to see who they put in front of this one. It's going to be Luis Suarez. Just before the horn sounds, pass, and that's time. I don't understand that play at all. 
I think he ought to shoot it right there, or at the very least, if he's going to slide the ball to the side, Jackson Collins has to be ready to shoot. Well, what it means is at the half, it is the Arizona impact all over the Las Vegas Knights by a 4-1 count. We'll be back in a minute with an interview with Coach Mike Cudmore. Stay tuned. Offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex with a full service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, and adopting healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. Sports Complex is a family and team-oriented multi-purpose facility which sits on a 250,000 square foot lot and offers over 50,000 square feet of climate controlled space. We provide three state-of-the-art full-sized arena soccer fields, two indoor and one outdoor. The indoor fields offer full-length sheets of glass, providing the spectator with a full view of all the action on the field. The newly remodeled outdoor field offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex, with a full-service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value So we are here with Coach Mike Cudmore of the Arizona Impact, and I'm just here to ask a few questions at the break. First question, what are your thoughts on set pieces? Because you guys were just dominating on set pieces. Uh, our set pieces are, are something that we pride ourselves on. We worked on that quite a bit this uh, past Monday at practice and stuff, so um, we're starting to finally get on our groove on set pieces. And then you have to talk about the defense this half, allowing just one goal in 30 minutes. Did you guys have a greater emphasis on defense this week? Oh, yeah. We got to stay tighter. Um, talk, we got, obviously, a couple of new little players that we're, we're mixing in, getting them to stay tight, um, possessing the ball a lot more in the back, work our way out of the back before we can go forward. And you can't really talk about possessing the ball out of the back without Eric Tate possessing it out of the back, the keeper. What are your thoughts on his performance so far? Ah, he's fantastic. Um, one of the goalkeepers, um, biggest emphasis for our team is being able to play with your feet. Um, Tate can play with his feet. Uh, everybody can see that right now, and that's what's able for us to be able to possess the ball, um, make our rotations in, in the midfield, the top, um, slow the game down, and counter when we want to counter. All right, thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. Go Impact. Right. Nice job, Mike. skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, 
and adopting healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. Arizona Sports Complex is a family and team-oriented multi-purpose facility which sits on a 250,000 square foot lot and offers over 50,000 square feet of climate controlled space. We provide three state-of-the-art full-sized arena soccer fields, two indoor and one outdoor. The indoor fields offer full-length sheets of glass, providing the spectator with a full view of all the action on the field. The newly remodeled outdoor field offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex, with a full-service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, and adopting healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. All right, let's go get shirts.
and healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. Arizona Sports Complex is a family and team-oriented multi-purpose facility which sits on a 250,000 square foot lot and offers over 50,000 square feet of climate-controlled space. We provide three state-of-the-art full-sized arena soccer fields, two indoor and one outdoor. The indoor fields offer full-length sheets of glass, providing the spectator with a full view of all the action on the field. The newly remodeled outdoor field offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex, with a full-service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. We hope that wherever you guys are, you enjoyed the break because now we are less than a minute away from warm-ups being over and the second half getting underway. It's been a great first half for the home side who leads four to one at halftime. And I gotta say, a large part of that was due to the play of Eric Tate, who is here right in front of me. But it's really been a team effort. It's been great set pieces, impressive defense. Everyone is playing loose tonight. As you can see, the whole gang laughing right now. And as I said before, just a total team effort. You look at the stats, they say it's a one-sided affair. Our apologies from, for some very small technical difficulties. We are back and the second half still has not begun. In case you missed any of that, the Impact have outshot the Knights 15 to eight for the game, including 11 to four in the second period. And before we get going, it's time to talk very briefly about Rising as One. The Rising as One podcast is a podcast about Phoenix Rising FC, the local professional team in the Valley, featuring Didier Drogba and many other outstanding names. Rising as One covers this team and gives you all the news you need to know about Phoenix Rising and other soccer in the Valley. So give it a shout, check it out. You can find us at Rising Pod on Twitter or as Rising as One in iTunes or Stitcher. and the players are walking back out on the pitch now for the second half. Looks like both sides have some of their strongest players out. The refs are ready to go. Both teams are ready to go. The keepers are ready to go. And it looks like we are moments away. In case any of you were not watching NFL football earlier today, just a couple scores, the Titans defeated the Chiefs 22-21, and the Falcons lead the Rams 13-10, just getting started in the second half in Los Angeles. 
But we're back to Phoenix right now with the second half for the Arizona Impact and the Las Vegas Knights. And here's a ball played forward for Jackson. But it's played off the wall by Merrick. Only for Jackson Collins to get back in there, but he loses it. Suarez tries to turn past two defenders, but the ball is cleared. And now Tyrell puts McCray under some pressure, but he wins the ball, passes it back to Casillas, and the Knights will build from the back. And you can see right away a lot more speed from the Knights, a lot more urgency. Will it result in anything? I don't know. But you can at least notice that difference. It's as clear as day. Now the impact have the ball out of the back. This is Sobi playing it to Merrick, and Merrick has some time. Sobi trying to make a run, but instead the ball is passed back to Tate, who, as we mentioned before, is very comfortable with it on his feet. That's part of Mike Cudmore's philosophy, playing out of the back, being more patient. Here is Sobi, and he plays it for Merrick off the wall. Merrick has time. He's going to take his time. Sobi. And they're looking for Armandi intercepted briefly, but Merrick is right there to clean up any potential mess. And the Impact are allowed to make a ton of changes. It's been a very calm first minute and a half for both sides. As a long ball is played well by Tate, played off the wall as Eric Hernandez tries to win the ball. Now Phil Jackson gets his foot in there and Hernandez almost had it. Instead, the Knights regain control. And really nice screening play by Osoro. Whoa! And absolutely rocketed high into the netting by Eric Hernandez. It was a chance. And you have to say, we've seen it before. Even though it's 4-1, it could be even more goals for the home side if some of those shots had stayed a little lower. Now Las Vegas tried to come up the field. It's a man advantage if they can do it. The ref played the advantage, but now they go back and a free kick will be awarded. Meanwhile, it is Hernandez on the ground and he's been on the ground for a few seconds. Matt Markham comes over to see if he's all right, but it looks like he gets up off his feet. And that's always good to see. Hernandez will come off though. Now there's some dispute as a shot is drilled by Markham. A substitution was indeed made. Noel Castillo come on. And a pretty physical battle on the boards is actually won by the impact. And a wall ball is played. Brilliant teamwork there. It was Omar Ledesma playing it off the wall and Noel Castillo to tap it home. Really nice play there. And that makes it five to one Arizona impact with 12 and a half minutes in the third period. The Knights came back. The Knights came back in their last match against the Impact, but that was a two goal deficit late in the third quarter. This is a four goal deficit for the visitors. It does look like the Impact are gonna have, or excuse me, the Knights are gonna have a good chance here as Suarez lines up. He passed it, and it didn't work out very well for the Knights. Passed it to, um, excuse me one second. The Knights still with the ball, but they lose it. Oh my goodness! What a foul there. Suarez, he didn't even waste one moment. He knew he was going into the box. That is an intense intense foul. Josh Alberts just got bodied into the wall and that's gonna be a penalty. I don't think anyone can even try to argue about that. Going back to that shot for Las Vegas off the free kick, it was Miles McRae who just could not put the ball on target. 
And now I am making sure that it is a man advantage. It is indeed a man advantage. Two minutes for the Arizona Impact. I think that's a frustration foul too. You're down by four goals. Nothing's really going your way. You know you have no chance to win that ball. And he just rammed into, into uh, the men. And now another guy on the ground. Things have been a lot more physical at the start of this half. It looks like it was George Osoro, but he's back up. He's fine, and it looks like things are going to be moving again. It is still a man advantage for the impact. Ball played forward, coolly headed to the side. Does Phil Jackson with the header. Now Markham passes it to the side. Sobe trying to find Tyrell, but it goes into the keeper's hands. And now Casillas has time. He will sling it up the boards, but really no one there. And now Tate has it and passes to Markham. And again, acres of space for impact to work out of the back. You're not seeing a lot of pressure on those situations, which plays right into the impact's hands. Perhaps it's because of the man advantage, but you feel at some point that the Knights are going to have to step up their intensity. Meanwhile, Cudmore tells the players, keep the ball moving with the man advantage. And indeed, they do move it there. They try to find Tyrell, but he could not get the right touch on it. And now, Casillas will just sling the ball forward. Down to 35 seconds in this power play with the impact holding a four goal edge. And this is Markham inside the Vegas Knights half with lots of space. There's a shot, how did that not go in? It looked like it took a deflection off of Giorgio Soro and then Casillas saved it and then Casillas with another save off of Phil Jackson. I mean, you really can't blame him for any of the goals Arizona scored. And things could be worse for the visitors if not for some fine saves by Casillas. Suarez gets back on the pitch and he has to feel relieved that his foul did not cost the team another goal. The ball is swung by Eric Hernandez and it's there from Merrick. Merrick's looking for someone. He's gonna slide it over to Tate. Tate will blast it up the uh, right side but it's taken by McCray and he's got space. Now a chance and it is just played wide. That was Carlos Lara for Suarez and Suarez could not find the target. It was not missed by much, but meanwhile, here come the impact. But the ball is really nicely cut out there and here comes Las Vegas. This is Suarez now attacked by two guys, but he gets it forward to his teammate, Kua. And now Lara for Kua, and Kua for Lara again. But there was just not a chance to shoot. So he'll slide it back, and the ball is gonna be played back to Chopin. And I think they're gonna reset it, they will. Really good defense there for Arizona Impact to really stop them from ever getting a first choice shot. Speaking of strong play, that was a great chest control by Omar Ledesma, allowing the Impact to make a couple subs keep possession and really take their time 845 left in this third period as a long ball is played forward chance from short range that actually fell really nicely for Ishmael Castillo but now the Knights are going to try an odd man rush it's a two on three as Kua tried to slide it into the middle Instead, Tate was there to take it away. And now a chance for Ledesma! And he scores! What a goal! That's an absolute cracker there. And it was Omar Ledesma putting it in off the right post and in. Boy, you're definitely going to want to see that one again. He put the moves on his defender to create the space with his left foot and then just blasts it. Really no chance there for Hector Casillas. 
You know, the Knights did win their first two matches, but they won them both by only one goal. They might end this game with negative goal differential if this keeps up. And meanwhile, the impact continue to play very composed in the back. The ball is played forward by Tate for Albers, who then passes back to Cortez. And really, when you're building out of the back, Impact like to think of the keeper as just another defender. Here's Tyrell. Tyrell trying, trying to do a Rabona. That didn't work out too well, but you gotta love the ambition there. And there's a great pass. A Panenka, excuse me. What an insane play though. Uh, unfortunately, it does not work out for the home side. They still have a chance to reset. But my goodness, you know you're feeling it when you can whip the Paneka out in the middle of a pretty intense game against a conference rival. Well, here's Tyrell again. Let's see if he gets that cheeky. This time he's going to play off the wall, trying to find Cortez making a run from the back. He's got to hustle back, though, because the ball is scooped up by Casillas. And now a chance here as Jackson Collins tried to get through some defenders. Nothing comes of it, though. And then just acres of space again to build out of the back. I mean, really, they're just toying with him here. We're more than halfway through the third period as <laughs> Tate even tried to get a shot in there, but it was no match for Casillas. That's a nice setup here, and now a chance. 1v1, but it was scooped up. Eric Hernandez with the opportunity, and Casillas with the save. And now we've seen a whistle here. It wouldn't be fair if I don't give credit to Phil Jackson for setting that play up, moving the ball down the center flank, and then sliding it at the right time to set Hernandez up with a great chance. The refs actually did go back and call a foul on Las Vegas, so it will be a free kick here with 6.07 in the third period. It's also a penalty on Las Vegas, a two-minute penalty, and that's going to give Matt Markham another chance to score. He's already put two in. Yeah. And a third! It wasn't quite Markham with the goal. It was Tyrell, but a clever little set play right there. Keep in mind there is absolutely no offsides in indoor soccer. So Tyrell just sitting there on the post, cleverly taps it in. And actually, right on cue, a fan just commented, we need a post game with Tyrell showing some support. Well, right on cue, Tyrell gets down there and taps it home, making the score seven to one impact. I think they're really taking all their frustration out on Las Vegas after many felt that the Knights escaped with a narrow win last week. The Knights are gonna try to build something in the impact attacking third but nothing comes of it yet. They're gonna swing the ball for McCray. McCray being closely guarded by Castillo, but he actually has some space here. If he can shake the defender, Merrick. Merrick stands his ground though. But a rocket shot was attempted by Carlos Lara. It was not on target. Vegas gets the ball back. And this is McCray getting into space. Brilliant save by Tate. And then a Vegas player goes down at the end of that play trying to sell something. That really just comes down to being fearless. And that was Eric Tate being fearless right there. Getting out there, it was basically a two on none. And he put his body on the line and blocked that ball up and away from the goal. We have an injury timeout. We have a trainer on the field attending to Eric Tate. 
with 5 minutes 16 seconds in the third period, the impact have continued to push forward. It is now 7 to 1. And it looks like Eric Tate is back up. Some nervy moments there for just a couple seconds, but he's fine. And just since we do have a few moments, I want to take us through these stats. We're looking at stats. Shots for the third period have been 5-0 to zero for the Arizona Impact. You know, if you're just watching this game, you're thinking, wow, Arizona is really controlling the pace, the tempo, everything. But the stats are really bearing that out. After a pretty even first period, it has been 16 to 4 Arizona impact on shots. And there's no way you can win a game when you're getting out shot like that. The clock gets going again as Jared Chopin tries to get things going for Vegas. Chopin swings the ball back to Casillas. And he plays a long ball for McCray, who gets it intercepted. Really, really nice defensive play by Matt Markham, who's got to be one of those guys, potential man of the match. He'll come off right now. He deserves the break after that kind of a move, and Armandi replaces him. And... Suarez finally pressures a little bit for Tate to just blast it forward. Oh boy, that's a very bad defensive play there. And Suarez has space. His shot gets blocked. And then Lara tries. Suarez tries again too. But Impact is able to escape a potential dangerous situation there after John Sobey overran the ball and gave Vegas a chance. The Knights are going to try some subs here. And Sobe decides, hey, I'll try to take advantage. They see nothing is on, and they pass it back to the keeper. And it goes back to that point of playing very patient. It's been a very patient effort from the Impact tonight. They've been playing very nicely, very cool, calm, and collected. Tate under some pressure, but they're able to swing it for Sobe, who has time as he approaches the line and passes it. To swing it off the wall for Armandi. And then the ball is played. Some nervy moments for the Knights. But the impact get there first. And then a nice little header there from Phil Jackson. Allows the impact to retain possession and make some subs. Only three minutes left in the third period. All impact. You really don't see much of a way for the Knights to come back. Even though you've seen some crazy things in this sport. And you know goals can come in a hurry. It looks... Like this is going to be Arizona's night. There's a battle in the corner, and the ball is swung free, at least briefly. But again, it's the impact making their presence felt as Sobe wins the loose ball and then gets a free kick chance. He was trying to drive it for the right wall. Ball gets tipped, and when it goes off the net, it's another free kick. So here's the money man all day, Matt Markham. Impossible for Vegas to deal with. And he's going to pass it. And a really nice sliding tackle. At least on this play, Vegas does have the answer. Good pressure there by Las Vegas from Jonathan Cabrera. And after some nervy moments, they do have to pass it back. Sobe tried to get a little cute there on that header. Can't blame him. You know Eric Tate wants to see an assist by his name, but the header goes over the net. And now Suarez trying to drive through the defense. But he wastes that play and toe pokes it into the net.
Long ball is played forward and collected by Noel Castillo, who back heals it. Oh my goodness. Josh Albers was the man on the receiving end of that back heel, and he ended up being on the receiving end of another slam into the wall. That's the second one of the match he's rammed into the wall. And once again, he draws a foul and another free kick chance. Chance for Markham to shoot, and he really almost put it in. Casillas got his hands there, but it, it kind of bounced straight up in the air. It was not a very authoritative punch. He did what he had to do, though. And now the impact will build from the back. There's a long ball played forward by Armandi. And Vegas is able to retain possession. Now they're going to swing the ball. This is a two-on-two -two chance for Suarez, playing it for Jackson Collins. Collins going to try a toe poke. But Tate was there to keep that out. And he's there to slide it to the left wing, where the impact will have the ball. And Tate calmly with the ball. They've got all sorts of time inside of a minute in the period. And once again, he plays it long off the wall, looking for Cortez. And that's Las Vegas kicking it into the net, which means the impact will continue to keep the pressure on. And you'll see Markham get back on there as a sub. He's been the free kick ace so far. They're gonna get it from the line. And they try to play it for Tyrell. This time they're able to get a block in there. And now the Knights will bring it forward. They're gonna try a long ball. That's a pretty good pass. And Tate, one of the very few times he makes a mistake clearing the ball, it's actually gonna set Las Vegas up with 35 and a half seconds in the third period. Lara is going to stand in front of the ball and he's going to play it short. Really nice kick save there. He played it to Chopin, but the ball was really nicely saved by Tate, who once again comes up tall to deny the Knights. There's a ball played forward. It is going to be a live ball still and a goal. Josh Sobey putting pressure on the Las Vegas defense. He wasn't able to get his touch on the ball, but it stayed alive. It came back to Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson made no mistake about that one, hammering it home. He's now got a hat trick on the night, making it the first Arizona Impact player to get a hat trick. <laughs> We have another comment with the football score in case anyone is interested in that. 16 to 10 now. But the score that really matters right here is 8 to 1. As the ball is played off the net. Still two seconds left in the third period. And that's going to do it. 8 to 1 impact. What an incredible effort for the home team. I think people came in expecting a stronger effort from these guys. I don't think anyone expected the kind of onslaught we've seen tonight. The offense, defense, and goalkeeping have all been in sync from the very first kick in this one. And Las Vegas, that's a very tired, very defeated looking roster as you look to your left. Very frustrated. and. I can't really blame him. It's 8 to 1.
take this moment to give another shout out to the Arizona Impact sponsor, Select Physical Therapy. Select Physical Therapy is the official physical therapy provider of the Arizona Impact. Whether it's physical training, hand therapy, work health needs, or sports medicine needs, Select Physical Therapy is there for you. And if the Arizona Impact Trust select physical therapy you should too so go to selectphysicaltherapy.com or visit select physical therapy for more information on how they can help you And if you're imp interested in watching an Arizona Impact game, maybe you couldn't make it out tonight, but you want to get out there, there are going to be several more chances to get out here and support the boys. Next Saturday, again at 7.05 p.m., your Arizona Impact will be hosting the Colorado Blizzard in a Western Conference versus Eastern Conference showdown. That's a team out of Denver. They're making a long trip to here for that matchup. So it's a good chance for the Impact to get a winning streak going. Then a matinee matchup on Sunday, January 28th, the Impact will be going against Ontario Fury. So that'll be another one to keep your eyes out on. But again, next Saturday, January 13th, 7.05 p.m., the Impact will be playing the Colorado Blizzard. And then back to the action, Ermondi somehow doesn't score. Wow. Just when you think they will uh, maybe take things easy on the visitors, not so fast. Carlos Lara is able to swing the ball to his teammate. But there's another deflection. And a long ball played. I'm surprised they didn't call a handball there. It ends up not mattering as Ledesma is able to play the ball. And they get the ball back to Tate. Ball is rocketed off the wall. Nearly a uh, dangerous moment there. But Tate saves it, and somehow the impact keep it in bounds. And now you've got an interesting situation against the wall. Casillas not looking too comfortable there under the pressure of Phil Jackson. But the Knights. Oh! Very, very ingenious attempt there by Noel Castillo with the back heel but no cigar. And now the impact can play it patient again. You are seeing more pressing by Las Vegas. Maybe too little for, too late for them. As the ball is played up against the wall. Only for Casillas to clear it. Now a 1v3, it's gonna be all Jackson Collins. He actually gets some space here and maintains possession against three guys. But Suarez, nowhere near the target. A wild attempt. Tate blasted off the boards. Gets it clear momentarily. But the ball is kept in by Eduardo Arredondo. Chance for Vegas? No, because the pass is misplayed. And here comes Tyrell with a chance. Trying to play it forward for Josh Albers. And instead, the ball gets deflected. And Las Vegas takes over. Jonathan Cabrera playing it. Playing it to Jackson Collins, but nothing doing. Well, they're finally not gun shy now after a couple tough minutes for them. More like a tough 47 minutes and change. We're down to 12 and a half minutes left in the game. Hector Casillas dribbling the ball. And now he finally, one of the first times, loses the ball and then just barely gets it back under intense pressure from Josh Alvers. Almost a disaster on top of disasters. 
Still nearly a full period left for either Las Vegas to salvage something from this one or for the impact to get their highest scoring result of the season. Their previous high came last week when they lost 9-8 to this very same team. So one more goal would do it. They also scored eight in a 10-8 loss to the Fury back in early December. The Impact are uh, finally able to make some subs. Coach Cudmore does not look very thrilled with some antics along the sideline, but we're back at it. And Markham and Tate playing keep away. Finally, Tate has to blast it up the wall, and Las Vegas will get possession. Where it's given away, this is Tyrell. Does he have anyone? No, he's going to have to play it back. Vegas had numbers, so it really wasn't a breakaway chance there. And now Lara with a nice touch. But the ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Arizona Impact ball for Hillel Cortez right in front of us, passing it to Matt Markham. He sends it to Tate. Tate to Cortez. Can't get past two defenders. Only 10 and a half minutes left in this one. And if there was any doubt, it has been removed by the way the Impact have played the first five minutes of this quarter. It's going to be a victory. It's going to be their first victory of the season and get them right back in the thick of the playoff chase. Some subs are made as the impact try to get the ball forward, but it's back to Las Vegas. One guy we have seen for the Knights getting more active is Jonathan Cabrera. But to no avail, Omar Ledesma makes his mark and scores the ninth goal of the night for the impact. And it's been an absolute onslaught. There is just no doubt about it now. Omar Ledesma with his second goal of the second half. And the Knights, they're going to be scratching their heads after this one. It has been a long evening for the Knights. Coach Sharkey for the Knights is not happy about that foul call. But it doesn't matter. And uh, I think the dispute here is that the sideline referee made that call. Now they're reversing it? Well, with the score so out of hand, Thankfully, this won't really impact the outcome of the game, but it is curious nonetheless. It will be a free kick for the impact, or for, for Las Vegas, excuse me. And the team might be rewarding Cabrera for getting more active. He's gonna be standing over the ball with Carlos Lara to his left. And instead, they call a timeout. Down by eight goals with nine and a half minutes left. I really don't understand that one too much, but we are going to get a timeout nonetheless.
And after all of that, we are back. We are back with a free kick, and it now looks like Suarez is going to be standing over the ball alongside Jonathan Cabrera. Suarez fakes it. Cabrera slides it over, and no one was there. Sharkey is uh, audibly displeased with his team's performance. Dropping a couple F-bombs. Meanwhile, uh, we have Tate with the ball with just over nine minutes left. And it's just got to be a frustrating one all the way around for uh, anyone supporting Las Vegas. They uh, just haven't been able to match the impact's energy, desire, anything really. And here come the impact trying to continue pushing for more. The ball was cut out, however, and a foul is committed. So Suarez will pass it. Stay tuned for a couple minutes after this match. We will be doing an interview with both coaches for the Arizona Impact. Both Cudmore and TJ Fisk will be alongside me for a couple minutes following the final whistle as they will discuss this big victory. On the field, you just saw Ivan Simmental blast the ball way up into the netting. And now another stoppage in play. And this is a timeout for the impact. I really am not sure about that one. In case any of you are interested in the other football in American football, I do recommend putting a TV on to uh, the Falcons-Rams game. It's 19 to 10 Falcons in the fourth quarter, but the Rams are trying to make things interesting. Just in case anyone cares about that. Here at the Arizona Sports Complex, it is all Arizona impact. On the board, goals wise, it's nine to one. You look at the shots, it's all Arizona impact. Shots are 25 to 14. Penalties, far more penalties for the Knights. Every facet of this game, every way you try to break this down. Offense, defense, keeping. Keeping your head in the game. Energy, winning the 50-50 balls. No matter how you break this one down, it has been the impact. And it's been the impact by a pretty wide margin all throughout. So we're finally back into this one with eight and a half minutes left. And it actually looks like the Impact have made a goalie substitution as they play the ball forward. Tate comes off and Josh Chelka comes in. And you gotta like the move, giving him a chance to get involved. Really, since the outcome is out of doubt, give the guy a chance, you know? And here is Chelka playing it forward to Armandi. Armandi with a nice cross field pass to Merrick, and Merrick's probably gonna play it back to Chelka, and he does. And just really nice triangle passing until a long ball is played forward. And this is Sobi. Sobi on the ball, looking to do something. But Las Vegas clears. Oh, and actually a chance now for Albers to turn and shoot, and he just missed it. That was a good effort, but it looked like it was two feet left of the post. And there is Albers making the nice pass to Chelka. He'll play it to Hermondi. Seven minutes left in this one as he plays a long ball off the wall, which actually reaches its target, Phil Jackson. There's a ball from Merrick up the wing. They're still fighting for it. Will Las Vegas clear? 
They haven't done it yet. And now they do. So the ball is played back to Chelka. And now Impact will come out of the back again. Mark them with it inside their own half. The Knights are pressing a little bit, but it's nothing that's really going to cause too much fear. These are the kind of passes you, you do all day in training, and right on cue, they actually turn it over. Here's a chance for Lara on his left. Little chip ball, but no one was there. I don't know what he was trying to do there. Easy collection by Chelka. And he'll slide it over to Cortez, who stays with it. He tried to play it long, but Las Vegas does enough. And now they'll try to bring it back up and do something. This is Lara. Lara to Ponce, or Andrade's, excuse me. But that was a brilliant block. And a whistle was blown before that wasteful effort. The ball is going to go to the impact. Vegas is unhappy about it, but they haven't been too happy with much tonight, if we're going to be quite frank. Phil Jackson comes off for the impact as a long ball is played forward. Really nice control, and it's just off the post. Oh, man, that would have been a highlight goal for Eric Hernandez. And it just went off the inside of the post and did not quite stay home. And then Ledesma hits it into the net under pressure, and Las Vegas takes over. This is Jackson Collins now. And he tries to find a teammate. He actually gets it back, slides it into the middle. Oh, and a chance for Las Vegas. They just can't take advantage. Suarez, once again, comes up empty-handed. And this is Casillas playing a little bit of sweeper-keeper, but he cannot find... Suarez on that play. And this is Tyrell unusually taking it out of the back. Whistle against the impact there. It was Ledesma getting a little bit too active. Now Jackson Collins for Las Vegas. Donning the silver and black that the John Gruden led Raiders will be wearing when they go over to Vegas. And now lots of space. I'm surprised, honestly, that Chopin didn't shoot that. And instead they try a wall ball. And it is coolly and calmly collected. So this is Cortez now. And they're playing it very loose out of the back. I feel like a little bit more pressure could have led to an interesting situation there. It wasn't the best ball back for Chelko, but... And there's Tyrell trying something. I mean, why not try things? Only four minutes left in this match, and it's 9-1. to one. Will Vegas have a chance here? They try the wall ball, and no one's on the receiving end. Actually, a good chance, and indeed, it is a goal. And it's two of the names I've been talking about, two of the names that have been active this half, Jonathan Cabrera passing it to Luis Suarez. Who gets a true poacher's goal? A little bit of consolation for the Las Vegas Knights. Here's a long ball. Oh, and it's really a great opportunity there for Ishmael Castillo. Nice ball by Matt Markham. First, Castillo could have headed it in. And then he had a rebound chance that was even better that he couldn't put in. Going the other way, Las Vegas had a good opportunity after Chelpka got a little too cute there. Las Vegas can't make him pay, though. A vicious wall ball played. And it's going to be McCabe getting out of there with it. And another chance from point blank range is missed. Hey, pick it up! Oh, and then a chance by Lara. And Chelka finally does get the ball. Hey, 
Las Vegas is coming into this game a little bit now, but they're still giving up way too much in the back. And Albers has to finish that. There's just no other way about it. He's got to finish that chance. Slid across beautifully. And now it's a one on zero, a two on zero. <coughs> and Ishmael Castillo makes no mistake about that one. It was a two on zero after the ball bounced by everyone on the Las Vegas side. They were putting numbers forward. No one there on the back end. And Castillo just coolly side foots it past Hector Casillas, who has had a very, very long day in goal. So still 225 left in this one, and it is now 10 to two impact. It really doesn't get too much more dominating than this kind of a performance. See if the Las Vegas Knights can do anything in these last two minutes. The ball goes back to Hector Casillas. As Tyrell watches. And that's a bad play off the wall. A chance for the impact. And a poor take there by Eric Hernandez, but they still have a chance. They'll play it back to Tyrell. What's really encouraging if you're looking at it from an impact standpoint is, yes, they have 10 goals. They could have even more goals. They've had great chances go to the wayside. If anyone, if people had really had their shooting boots on today, we could be talking about 13, 14, 15. And there it is, Hermandi to Tyrell. The impact are showing no mercy in these late stages. Just a minute 11 here, Chelka. Plays it forward, no one quite there. And he's gonna have to hustle because he's got Cabrera on his heels. But he does successfully get the ball off the wall. And Tyrell has it, he'll pass it back. Chelka appearing content. That's gotta be a handball, no? And yes it is, they call it. Cabrera really doesn't have any argument there. He just shakes his head and moves on back. 47 seconds here. And it looks like Arizona is content to just pass the ball in the back. Don't want to risk any injuries. They're just going to dribble out the last few seconds. Kind of like an NBA game where the teams agree not to touch the ball. The final 20 seconds will bleed off the clock and Arizona will win this one 10 goals to two. An utterly dominant performance for the home side. An emphatic first win of the season. And we're just waiting for that horn now. It's coming any second in two, one. And that's gonna do it. The Arizona impact after outscoring Las Vegas in every period of the match wins 10 to 2. They win the first period 1-0, second period 3-1, third period 4-0, and the fourth period 2-1. Absolutely no mercy from start to finish here. Just a dominant performance and uh, some very bitterly disappointed faces for Las Vegas. Phil Jackson with a hat trick for the home side. Omar Ledesma with two goals and a lot of other players just getting in on the act. It's been a very balanced day. Markham with two goals and two assists. It's really tough to choose a man of the match. Tate with great saves. But I think we're done here. 10 to two, Arizona Impact with their first win of the season. Please stay tuned. We're gonna have both coaches over in a couple moments. Mike Cudmore and TJ Fisk for a post game chat. So just stay tuned. personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows. Our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, 
and adopting healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. Arizona Sports Complex is a family and team-oriented multi-purpose facility which sits on a 250,000 square foot lot and offers over 50,000 square feet of climate controlled space. We provide three state-of-the-art full-sized arena soccer fields, two indoor and one outdoor. The indoor fields offer full-length sheets of glass, providing the spectator with a full view of all the action on the field. The newly remodeled outdoor field offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex, with a full-service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, and adopting healthy lifetime behaviors by providing superior services, quality programs, premium facilities, and a qualified, dedicated staff. We're located off Pinnacle Peak Road, just west of 35th Avenue on the south side of the street. Come by and see us soon. Arizona Sports Complex is a family and team-oriented multi-purpose facility which sits on a 250,000 square foot lot and offers over 50,000 square feet of climate controlled space. We provide three state-of-the-art full-sized arena soccer fields, two indoor and one outdoor. The indoor fields offer full-length sheets of glass, providing the spectator with a full view of all the action on the field. The newly remodeled outdoor field offers a breathtaking view of the gorgeous Arizona sunset. There is something for everybody here at our complex, with a full-service snack bar, a pro shop, games for the kids, and league play every night of the week for every age and skill level. From soccer programs to lacrosse and personal training, birthday parties, corporate events, and even dog shows, our complex provides any group an unforgettable playing or event experience. Arizona Sports Complex is dedicated to improving players' skills in competitive sports, teaching the value of good sportsmanship, and adopting healthy... Hello, this is Dominic Kearns here with both coaches, Mike Cudmore and Pete Sharkey with the Las Vegas Knights. And uh, Pete, I'll start with you. It's tough to beat any team twice in a row in this league, right? Very tough. I mean, obviously in this league, it's in its infancy. This is his first year for the M2 of the MASL. Um, so both teams, you know, Arizona and Vegas have a great respect for each other. Down the years, we, we played against each other in the pro level and now in the semi-pro amateur level. I've known obviously Patrick Fisher for a long time. A lot of respect for him, a lot of respect for Mike. Trying to get the young guys at this level to try and get them to understand, especially on road games, it's a lot harder to travel with full squads, but certainly to play against a team that's as smart and educated as the Arizona Impact and with the veterans they have along infuse the young guys, it's certainly a tough challenge to come here and play against these guys. Tough result today, but how are you looking to build for the rest of the season? So for the rest of the season, you know, I, I obviously have a, a talented squad. Um, of ex-MASL pros in Las Vegas that are there for ex-Legends players. But getting them to travel and, you know, with family obligations and other jobs, it's kind of hard for travel. So at this stage, I'm really just trying to bring through the young guys, 
most of the guys I have here today, this is only their second ever pro game at this level, playing against top quality opponents. So there was growing pains obviously today, but this will help them grow for the future and get the experience that they need. Have some other young guys that I've been looking at that weren't able to make this trip, but as the season progresses, 12 game season, we hope to bring in some more young guys and at least get them as the season progresses towards the later stage, hopefully make the playoffs. And by that time, they'll have the experience, hopefully to help us in a playoff push. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And coach, speaking of breakthroughs, how did it feel to finally get the uh, goose off the, just finally win one? Uh, finally, it feels good. Um, it's taking a little bit, but uh, starting to come together. I'm kind of like coach over here, some new guys. Um, and I think I have seven new guys, second game. So we're kind of in the same boat. We're just all, I think all the teams are just trying to build. And we even talked about at halftime, building out of the back, what did it mean to you to keep to see the team continue that emphasis for the entire 60 minutes? Oh, it means a lot, man. That, that's pretty much what this game takes, is being able to possess the ball in the back, have a good goalkeeper that can use their feet to be able to slow the game down when you need to and then counter when you need to. And I know that it was a total team effort, but are there any players in particular you think really made their impact felt tonight? Um, I think, obviously, our goalkeeper, uh, Tate, um, stepped up. Played. Um, we had one new kid. This is his first game. I uh, played in the back for the first time. Uh, Helio did a very, very good job. He's never played at this level. He's never played indoor. This is technically his first game indoor. So he stepped up and played. And how are you looking to build off of this win and get some momentum, get back in the playoff push? Uh, we're going to just keep sticking with what we're doing. Keep trying to possess the ball. Um, we just got to get everybody out, be consistent, keep playing. All right. Thank you both for your time. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. And that'll do it here from the Arizona Sports Complex. This is Dominic Kearns signing out.